Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the Canon EOS R3. A camera I didn't plan to buy but when one fell into my lap I quickly jumped on it. Initially I wasn't too interested in the R3 because of the small megapixel count with just 24 and the relatively high price tag. However, the camera has definitely started to impress me. So let's see how I went with it in the field and whether I'm going to keep it around. The first thing you notice when you grab the R3 is actually how light it is. It's actually lighter than an R5 with an attached battery grip and two batteries on it. And it's also much lighter than a 1DX Mark III or a Nikon Z9 for instance. So the R3 weighs in at only 1 kilo or around 2.2 pounds, whereas the 1DX Mark III or a Nikon Z9 weigh in around 3 point something pounds and around 1.4 kilo. So when it comes to weight and balance, the R3 is truly unrivaled and feels fantastic in you. The camera also comes with a 24 megapixel BSI stacked sensor and that sensor has a very fast readout which allows us to basically have no rolling shutter in the images which is great. When it comes to speed the R3 is also fantastic. It can shoot up to 30 frames per second in the electronic shutter mode and up to 12 frames per second in the mechanical shutter mode. One thing that's definitely great about it is that in all modes the R3 can shoot 14-bit RAW files. So even in the fastest electronic shutter mode the camera is not dumbing down the files like what happens on an R5 for instance where it goes down to 12-bit. So 14-bit all the way on the R3, which is fantastic and definitely helps with the noise and the editing process. What a lot of you will probably also like is that you can actually adjust the frame rate with the electronic shutter as well. So you don't have to shoot at 30 frames per second all the time. You can, for instance, dial it back to 15 frames per second. I know a lot of you guys are not happy with the electronic shutter modes on your cameras because they're completely silent. That's a feature that I really love, but you will be happy to hear that on the R3 now you can actually have a shutter sound and you can also adjust the volume of the shutter sound. So it can either be very faint or quite noticeable and loud. So for you out there that love the shutter sound, this will be a welcome feature. Now with all that speed, we also need a sufficiently sized buffer and I think the R3 does well enough in that area. The files are also not too large, so they write pretty quickly onto the card, so I didn't really have any issues of hitting the buffer too fast or too quickly, so that's been great. What I also really like about this body is that it's completely weather sealed to the same standard as the 1DX Mark III, so you can basically shoot this in full rain as well without having too much concern about the camera drowning on you. And the other great thing is that now with the new multifunction hot shoe at the top, you can also shoot flash in the electronic shutter mode. That's something that no other Canon camera can do. And I think that's very helpful and very good. So that's definitely a feature that I value in the R3. Just holding the R3 in your hand makes you appreciate the design because everything is just perfect. All the buttons are in the right spots where your fingers can easily reach them. And my hand wraps very nicely around the body and just the design of the body and the materials feel very nice. So if I had to pick my favorite camera body ever made, it would basically be this one because just the design feels so nice. It has the nice screen that comes out at the back and rotates around so you can also close it and cover it so you don't get any scratches on it. And just all the buttons, the record button and the switch from video to photos in a great spot. The multi-controller is an amazing invention from Canon that came over from the 1DX Mark III series where by simply running your thumb over the multi-controller, you can easily move your autofocusing points around and so much quicker and easier than using the joystick. So that's very cool. Another thing you may notice on this R3 right away is this massive kind of viewfinder EVF that's actually protruding out from the back of the camera a fair bit, but it works really well in the field. It's nice and bright and it basically has no blackout or lag. So if you're shooting fast actions, it's nice and smooth. You're kind of seeing the live action and it's very hard to miss the moment. Something that can much easier happen on other mirrorless cameras where you have a bit of a delay or blackout and that sometimes causes you to miss the scene. The first disappointment I have when opening the car door on the R3 is that there's one CF Express Type B slot, which is great. But then, unfortunately, we also have an SD card slot in there. And personally, I would have loved to see two CF Express Type B card slots in there because the cards are just so much faster. And I think a camera of this caliber should have two CF Express Type B card slots and not one SD and one CF Express card slot. 
When it comes to the batteries, these work quite well. Unfortunately, it has been impossible to buy any spare batteries. So I've been for the last few months just using the one battery that came with the camera and that has worked, but it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes because while the battery life is good, I definitely wouldn't trust it to last like a full day of heavy shooting. So usually when I'm out in the morning, I come back home, I charge the battery before I go out in the evening again, just to make sure that I don't run out of battery. I've used the R3 with older adapted EF lenses and that works well, but the old lenses are definitely holding back the R3, especially when it comes to autofocusing speeds. The true power of the R3 only shines through when you're pairing it with the new RF glass. For instance, on my EF600 version 2, the R5 and the R3 kind of have the same focusing speed. They feel very similar. But on the 100 to 500, or especially on the new RF 600 millimeter lens, the R3 is faster than the R5. And especially in that RF 600 millimeter lens, I think that comes due to the fact that the R3 has the bigger battery. And the RF 600 millimeter lens apparently has two autofocusing motors, but only the R3 with the bigger battery can actually take full advantage of both of these motors. Where the R3 really stands out to me is when it comes to image stabilization and the combination of the IBIS in the camera with the image stabilization in the newer RF lenses. Another area where the R3 really shines is the autofocusing. There are a lot of options and customization abilities in the camera and the subject recognition is almost instant and it tracks the subject very well. Where I noticed the biggest difference is actually in very low light in the dark rainforest. When I took the R3 up the mountain to photograph some wood birds in the dark forest, I noticed how much better and faster the autofocus works compared to like a R5 or Nikon Z9. In that dark environment, most cameras just hunt, they go past the subject and it's actually very hard to focus properly on your subject. The R3 comes with a lot of new autofocus systems and customization ability. Just like an R5 on R6, the R3 has the normal autofocusing, like the traditional autofocusing where you can have the spot autofocus or just one autofocus field or one autofocus field with the surrounding fields activated or certain zones. And just like an R5 on R6, the R3 also has that amazing animal eye tracking and people tracking, car tracking, etc. that the R5 and the R6 have. So in that regard, the cameras are pretty similar and the autofocusing also behaves pretty similar. But on top of all these amazing features, the R3 has a few more options now. There's one thing in the menu now that's called subject detection on or off. And when you enable subject detection in the menu, it now allows you to have tracking in all autofocusing modes. So for instance, you can have the traditional spot autofocus. The spot autofocus will now stay on the spot that you initially focused on because you activated the tracking. So in a way, this is quite similar to the Nikon 3D tracking. So while on an R5, for instance, you can only have the tracking when the camera picks the subject by itself from all over your viewfinder. On the R3, you can now have one autofocusing field or an expanded autofocusing field or a zone. Direct that onto your subject and then initiate the tracking from that point and the camera will stay on that point that you're focusing on and then track your subject through the frame. So that's a very interesting new addition to the Canon autofocusing system and it's actually quite useful. And while this feature actually sounds very interesting and works quite well at times in the field, I decided to turn it off on my R3 and there's a few reasons. First of all, I actually felt like I was a little bit slower because now instead of just pressing the AF on button to engage the eye tracking and the camera finding the bird all over the viewfinder, if I use the other mode, I have to kind of move the autofocusing field onto the right spot and then start the tracking. And I feel like in a lot of situations, this is actually a bit slower simply because the R3 is so great at finding the right subject itself. So in certain situations where it's very tricky, I may use the spot autofocus with tracking engage, but in most cases, I trust the camera to find the subject for me. And then there's one more annoying thing, and that is if you engage subject tracking for all autofocusing modes, you cannot have the normal kind of traditional autofocus then. So whenever I use the spot autofocus and focus on something, it will start tracking, or sometimes it slightly jumps off and doesn't focus exactly on the spot that I want to focus on. And as we all know, Mirrorless cameras sometimes like to get stuck on the background. 
And the only good way I've found to get the camera to quickly focus on my subject again is to use this traditional spot autofocus without tracking. And if I have tracking engaged, I cannot have that mode. If I really want the subject tracking, I actually programmed it to one of the front buttons here. So if I'm now in the traditional spot autofocus, I focus on something, then press the front button, it will engage the tracking. And if I then press the star button again to focus, it will stay on the spot with the tracking and now track it all over my viewfinder. So by doing it that way, I can have the best of both worlds, but if I actually enable the subject tracking in the menu, I lose the ability to have the traditional autofocus and that's not something I like. So my solution to that is animal eye tracking on the AF on button, traditional spot autofocus on the star button, and then optional subject tracking on or off on the front button. So if I really need it, I can activate it, but most of the times I'm just happy with the eye tracking on the AF1 button and the traditional autofocus on the star button. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the very annoying issue that actually all mirrorless cameras have, and that is sometimes they get stuck on your background. So while with most other mirrorless cameras, this is a lot more of an issue, the R3 is not perfect, but it's far improved in that area and it's much easier to focus between different subjects and different distances. Another often talked about feature on the R3 is the eye control. So you can activate that in the menu and then you have to calibrate it a lot and then you can actually kind of control where the camera focuses or where it moves the autofocusing field to with your eyes. And while that sounds like a cool feature in theory, personally, I don't like it at all. I've activated it a few times, I played around with it, I calibrated it like a hundred times, but it never truly seemed to work. And I also noticed that I'm actually looking around a fair bit while taking images. So kind of looking all over the viewfinder and then with the eye control enabled, I was constantly moving my autofocusing point away from the subject. So to really have that work, you kind of have to stare like crazy onto your subject and like not move your eyes at all around in the viewfinder. So personally, I'm just not a fan of the feature. I think it's a bit of a gimmick. I don't use it, but I can definitely see this working for other people. And if it's kind of something for you, I think it would be great, but it's definitely not something that I will be using a lot. So the autofocus is where the R3 really shines with lightning fast performance, great tracking, and a lot of customization options that should allow anyone to find an autofocusing modes that work perfectly for them. Now we've talked a lot about the camera, but have not looked at any images now. So let's jump right in and look at a few samples that I've prepared for you. The first images I want to show you are these three images of an eastern whipbird taken in the deep dark rainforest at ISO 25600 with the R3 and the 100 to 500 millimeter lens. What really surprised me when we zoom into these files is how nice and sharp they still are, how nicely they maintain the detail at these very high ISOs, and how little noise there is considering these images were taken at 25600 ISO. Of course, having larger pixels on the sensor and less megapixels helps with the eyes all performance, but I'm definitely impressed how well the R3 performs in the low light when it comes to the image quality, the noise levels, and also the autofocusing speed and subject recognition. Next, I wanna show you an example of Galar images to illustrate how important 30 frames per second can be when it comes to action photography. You can see the Galar landing, I slightly overexposed, but you can see that's actually hard to get a good wing pose, but with 30 frames per second, I'm getting a lot of options. Then I fix the exposure and see, there we go. I'm getting some nice poses and the variation. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is that you can also get a lot of opportunities. For instance, when the bird is drinking, you can see it's coming out of the water and you get a lot of different scenes with the droplets and the reflection. So there's a lot of awesome images to pick from. With a slower camera, you might only get two or three options and the droplets and the bird's pulse is never in the right spot. Whereas with the 30 frames per second, you get a lot of variety. And now you might think this Galar was sitting there for an eternity, but I checked the time, it was actually all happening within eight seconds. So sometimes having a fast camera definitely helps. And if we zoom to the, into these images, we see some good details, some good sharpness, and not too much noise considering we're shooting at ISO 6400 to get enough shutter speed for the action and have a relatively dark background. Next, I just wanna show you a few different kind of images. This is taken with the R3, usually with the 100 to 500 and the 1.4 extender, 
or with the f4 600 millimeter lens so the first example is one of my infamous car park curlies taken with the 100 to 500 iso 3200 if we zoom into that we see some nice feather detail and really not much noise at all at iso 3200 the next image is a beautiful female hooded robin taken with the r3 and the 600 f4 version 2 with the 1.4 extender and if we zoom into that we see some nice sharpness and again not much noise and lastly i want to show you another image of a spotted niger that was sitting on the road and it was just illuminated by the headlights of our car and the r3 actually did really well here even in the dark at night it still focused pretty easily on the bird and the eye tracking worked pretty well as well so i was quite impressed with how it performed overall even at night in these dark conditions and if we zoom into this file, it's taken with a 600mm f4 lens with a 1.4 extender wide open at ISO 25600. And I think the ISO performance is very good with decent sharpness. And lastly, I want to show you my two favorite images that I've taken with the R3. This is of a group of zebra finches that all were coming to perch. And with the high frame mode, I actually managed a few birds perching, also getting a lot of poses where the birds actually look at me and even captured one of the birds in flight coming to the perch. So that was pretty good. I was a little bit further away. So this is a little bit of a crop. It's about 3,800 pixel on the long side. So I had to crop a decent amount in, but it still holds up reasonably well. Here you can see the raw file with my pro set applied that just gives it much nicer overall colors. And then here you can see my final image where I just cleaned it up a little bit, made the background a bit darker and darkened down the birds a bit more. I'm also happy to report that my pro sets work very well with the R3 and give me a great starting point and much better colors than what Adobe can usually give me. So if you're interested in these, make sure to check them out down in the description. They will definitely help you with just one click to dramatically improve your raw images. And once you've gotten your raw images to that great starting point, it's now time to learn how to edit them to perfection in Photoshop. And that's exactly what I teach you in my masterclass, where I show you step by step all the necessary things and tools you need to know in Photoshop to make your own images look amazing. So if that's of interest to you, make sure to check that out down there in the description. Here's another awesome image that I got of the Galas at the water spot. This is another image where I think with a different camera, I probably wouldn't have been able to get it because only with the 30 frames per second, I was actually able to get the fully stretched wing pose. With the R3, I was able to actually get that extra two, three, four shots. And that actually allowed me to get a shot. So all in all, the files coming out of the R3 are great. They're nice and sharp and they show very little noise even at high ISO. However, they don't really wow me. So while the images are great, they do leave something to be desired for me. In one of my next videos, I will compare the R3 to the R5 and will show you on a lot of examples why I'm a little bit disappointed with the R3 file. They just seem to lack a little bit of fine detail and ultimate sharpness, which is the main downside for me. And also with the 24 megapixels, there is only limited ability to crop at times. That video comparing the R3 and the R5 with a lot of examples will come out very soon. So stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out. Let's talk about video because this is where the R3 really stands out for me. It does well for photos, but even better for videos. It shoots great 4K 30, 4K 60, 4K 120, and also some stunning 6K RAW and RAW light, which has quickly become one of my favorite formats. And I can do that in 6K 30 and 6K 60 frames per second. So that format seems to be a great compromise of size, quality, and editing ability. And it's something that I really enjoy using and have been getting some stunning results with it. And the best thing about the R3 is so far, I have had zero overheating issues. On my recent Cab York trip, one of the shots that I really wanted to get was the more scenic wide angle shot of a termite mount with a nest in it and the two parents on top and then flying down to the nest. So to not disturb the birds at all, we went there in the pitch black, set up the camera, kind of tried to frame it in the dark, hit the camera behind bushes, and then I connected the R3 to my phone with the Canon app. So for the rest of the day, probably about three hours, the R3 was standing there in standby, connected to my phone with the Wi-Fi. And from time to time, wherever the birds would come in, I pressed the record button and the camera would start recording in 6K raw light. And I did that for two or three hours with 
no overheating issues, the battery was still fine. And to my surprise, when I went to pick up the camera in the middle of the day, it was actually boiling hot. I could almost not touch it, but even though the camera was so hot and in the glaring sun, it did not overheat. So I was very happy in that regard. So the R3 has actually quickly become my main video camera and I really love it for video. It has great auto focusing ability and it does not overheat and it doesn't have that silly 29 minute recording limit like an R5 on R6 set for instance. What's also great about the R3 in video mode is that it maintains the ability to directly film from photo mode with the settings that you've saved in custom function number three in the video mode. So if I'm shooting photos and I want to record a video, all I need to do is press the red record button on the back of the camera and it will record with my predetermined settings that I've dialed in in custom function mode number three. So this is great and the only other camera that can do that is the R5. It's so much easier to quickly switch between photo and video because you don't even have to turn that dial on the back of the camera. If you want to do more video things, of course you would switch into video, but to just take a quick video in between bursts of photos, it's great because all I need to do is press that red button and I can start recording right away. And if I press it again, it will jump back to photo mode. So while I don't use the subject tracking with the traditional autofocus modes too much on the R3 in photo mode, I love it in video mode because there it really helps me to direct the camera onto the subject. As you know, with the video eye tracking, it works quite well, but sometimes there's like a branch in front of your subject and then the camera just always focuses on the branch instead of your subject because it just struggles to identify what you actually want to focus on. So in video mode, I can now have like a small zone for instance, move that zone with the multi-controller really smoothly onto my subject. And then while I track the subject, I can also keep that zone onto my subject. And now by having the zone activated, the camera will only look to focus in that square of the zone. So I can be a lot more precise with where I want to focus in video mode. And while I don't really seem to need it in photo mode, in video mode, this has improved my keeper rate dramatically. And if there's a bird in the tree, for instance, it's much easier to keep focus on it now. So in video mode, the subject tracking is really great and something I love. So all in all, the R3 is by far Canon's best camera. It takes great photos, fantastic videos, comes in a nice and lightweight, awesome body that has the buttons all in the right places and lies very nicely in your hand. And it also has amazing autofocus with a lot of customization options. So will I keep this camera? Of course. Although I might not be actually using it the way you think I might because the R3 will be my main video camera going forward. I will mainly use the R3 in high action scenarios and in low light. If you want to know why, Make sure to check out my video where I compare the R3 and the R5 that will be coming out very soon, where I show you exactly on a lot of examples why in some situations I think the R5 might actually be the superior camera. And we're also going to answer the questions, are 24 megapixels enough for bird and wildlife photography? So stay tuned for that and also make sure to let me know all your thoughts about the R3 in the comments. Do you own an R3? What do you think of it? Are you looking to buy one? Let me know. Also give me a thumbs up for this video and make sure to subscribe to my channel down there and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.